Welcome to the final module of this training. I hope that you feel like you've learned a lot about connecting with your children and learning how to speak their love languages. In this last module, I want to touch on um, how to involve families and engage families in the classroom through love languages and through honoring their traditions and cultures. I've spoken about this throughout each section, each module of the training, but I want to really pull it all together to give all of you some ideas of ways that you can do this effectively. Um, you want to make sure that when you think about having families be a part of your classroom, that you're engaging them, not just feeling like you're involving them. Involving them can be any number of things. Um, it can be having them come in and cut things out. It can be going on field trips. But when families are truly engaged, it means that they feel a part of the classroom and they feel like their culture um, as a family and traditions are, as a family are valued and are a part of your curriculum. So keeping that conversation going and connecting with them on the culture that ha exists within their home is very important. You want to build from a strengths-based approach. So anytime you talk to families, you want to make sure that the information that you share about their child comes from a strengths-based perspective. You want to share positive things with them before you need to move on to challenging behaviors and that sort of thing. You also want to um, value and let them know that you value their cultural practices um, even as they're different from things that might be going on in the classroom and invite them to come in and to be a part of the classroom and share those with the entire classroom. You need to listen and use exact phrases. So when you have family meetings or home visits, um, you need to really maybe take some notes of things that you hear the family saying to one another and embed those into the classroom language. When you do that, the child recognizes that those conversation um, or those phrases are coming from home and so it makes them feel valued and comfortable in the classroom. Understand that some behaviors of children are going to be culturally different from what you might be used to having in your classroom and so being sensitive about those differences such as the physical touch that we talked about being a little bit different for some cultures. Look at that and make sure that you understand their cultural values and that you're explaining to the family the practices that you use in your classroom. You always want to greet families when they arrive. You want to make sure that you connect with them and that you stay in, in conversation so that you're always updating families and make them feel welcome in your classroom. You want to give continuity of care and that means having the same people every day and sometimes that means in certain centers you need to try and schedule the same people to work at the same time so that the families have a person and a point of contact that they are used to and comfortable with sharing and talking with. You want to make sure that you're doing those home visits and conferences to keep that line of communication open and you want to look at parents as though they're partners and not just families that are not present in the child's educational experiences. And anytime you can, help parents connect with other parents, whether that's through um, hosting family events or um, maybe connecting them to one another when you know they have similar interests or needs. And value contributions from all the parents. That helps them feel important and part of the classroom and part of their child's educational experience and the child will pick up on that as well. <clears throat> You want to engage families, as I said, and embed all those traditions into the practices of the classroom. So you might want to look at, for instance, if you have a child who speaks Spanish sometimes at home and their parents speak Spanish, you want to try to find maybe some books that you could read in Spanish. Have the parents come in and teach a song that's in Spanish to all of the children. Um, when you sponsor events, you can have families come in and share with other families things about their culture. Um, I know I've been a part of a family night before where um, the family brought in food that was part of their culture and, were, and they were able to share and have conversation with other families about it. You want to, again, schedule the same time 
um, the same staff at the same time so you have that continuity of care and that open line of communication and you want to make sure that you're integrating the child's first language into the classroom. If you don't know that language, have the parents teach you some words so that you're able to do that. Supporting families in and out of the classroom involves those home visits and those conferences. You're also able to, outside of the classroom, have more conversations sometimes when you have those parent conferences at their house or those home visits at their house and you're able to pick up on things that might happen in the house that you didn't know uh, were part of their culture. You want to share picture books where the characters in the picture books look and act and sound like people that the children are used to seeing in their homes. And so that means making sure that you're picking diverse picture books that you read in your classroom and have parents come in again. And if it's um, in another language, have them come in if they speak that language and read it to the children in that language. And you might want to ask families to share a special song or lullaby or something like that from their culture so that you're able to embed that as well. What do relationships with the children in your care look like? And what do the relationships with parents look like? You want to think, imagine that someone's taking a picture of the interactions that you have with children and with families throughout the day. And what would that look like to them? It helps you to look at it from a different perspective instead of being in the middle of the classroom. If you can think, what would it look like if someone were recording or taking a picture? Sometimes that might mean actually doing that. You want to think about what interactions would be captured and what strengths you have and what kinds of things you need to improve upon to make sure that you are engaging families and speaking the love languages of the children in your care. You want to think too about are my interactions joyful and am I modeling that with my interactions with other teachers and with parents? Because children will pick up on all of those things and you want to build that strengths-based perspective in your classroom. This is a slide that just looks at some strategies for building secure children. And all of the love languages, when you learn to communicate with children in the love language that they speak, you're helping to build secure relationships and attachments and bonding. So, number one, you want to attempt to understand the child's behaviors and the love language that they speak. You wanna think, how do these behaviors connect to their love language? And you want to make sure that you're being responsive and really truly listening and responding to the child's care and the child's needs as soon as possible. You want to use opportunities to be physically close for those whose love language is physical touch. And you always want to be warm and inviting, making eye contact and keeping a calm voice. And when you do all of those things, children begin to understand that you care and want to make that connection. And when you have those expectations, they want to please you and meet those expectations. To help children connect to the classroom and feel like that is their classroom and they belong there, you want to try to use photos too that are of their families and of the children doing things in the classroom and being successful at it because that's going to help with their self-esteem. When you have pictures of their families and things that they do that's bringing in and embedding their family culture. And you always want to make sure that you use the child's name when you're talking to them because again it builds that self-esteem and listening skills. You want to use meaningful language and expand on it for vocabulary and always respond to the child's vocalizations, especially children who don't have words yet. That might be making vocalizations back or might be giving them words and actually saying a sentence for them that you think they're trying to convey. And you always want to use routines, hand washing, diaper changing, lining up at the bathroom or the water fountain as opportunities to interact with the child. And you definitely need to spend time on the floor. When you are at the child's level, they know that you are right there with them and that you're learning with them and that you love them and are attached to them and are trying to meet their needs and speak their love language. Again, I hope that you've learned a lot from this course. If you have any questions at all, feel free to email me. We have one last thing that you need to do before you wrap up the course, and that's to fill out the evaluation form. 
That form is in the form of a Word doc. So again, you can either type into the Word doc and upload it on Canvas, or you can print it out, fill it out with a pen or pencil, scan it, and then upload it. But again, due to how many people we have in the course, um, I'm not able to accept them by email or text. So please make sure that you upload those in Canvas. Again, thank you so much for joining me in this course, and I hope that you will try to um, meet the children's needs and speak their love language and share what your love language is with them as well.